Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and welcome to the seventh and final video of our Ultimate Premiere Pro Basics course. We just finished going over how to work with color inside of Premiere Pro. Now, we're on to finishing up your project and exporting. So, let's finish up this course with video number seven. Congratulations guys, you've made it to the last video of this seven part tutorial series. By now, you should have effectively learned how to create your own video in Premiere Pro. But there's one last step before you can actually show your video to the world, and that's exporting it. So let's get started. The very first thing that you're going to want to do before exporting may sound simple, but it's essential, and that's watching your video all the way through. This is important because you want to know if parts of your project got moved, switched up, muted, blocked, or deleted by accident. And unless you watch it all the way through from the beginning, you run the risk of missing these mistakes. Even though going through the process of re-watching it may seem frustrating, what's even more frustrating is to see after you've exported it that there's things that you've missed or things that you wish you would have changed. Especially if you sent it off to a client, or worse yet, while you're watching it in front of a group of people. While you're watching it through, keep in mind of a few things. Take a look to make sure that there's no gaps between black spaces in your clips. If possible also, watch twice, once with headphones and once with computer speakers. Chances are that your video will sound different depending on how it's being played. And listening from different audio references will help you to ensure that your audience can clearly hear your video and that it's not too loud or too quiet in different sections. Once you've run it through from start to finish, you need to set in and out points before exporting. These are markers that tell Premiere what you actually want to be the start and end points of your video. If you were to take your video as it was and export it without these markers, it would include literally anything that's on your timeline. That means if you had leftover footage just sitting way after the video, your export would include that too. To set an out point, take your playhead and move it to the very end of your video. Some people may also prefer to have a little bit of black space at the end of their video, but that's a personal preference. Hit the O key to set your out point. Now your in points should be automatically set to the very beginning of your timeline. But if you'd like your video to start at some point after the very beginning, simply bring your playhead to that spot and hit the I key. Now that your in and out points have been set, you can export your video. Do this by either going to File, Export, Media, or by hitting Control or Command M. You should now be greeted with the Export Settings window. Here we can see your export settings, a smaller version of your timeline that we can scrub through, and your video screen. For pretty much any export, you'll only need to worry about this export settings section. This is where you tell Premiere how you want your video to be bundled together into a final file by choosing the file format, quality presets, and the name of your video, as well as a whole range of other options. We're going to go through a very common all-purpose set of export settings. These are a very safe option that's used primarily for putting videos online because they have a very good visual level of quality while at the same time keeping the size of the file very low. The file format we're talking about is H.264. So we'll go to Format and choose H.264. From here we can choose a variety of presets. Almost everything we do from here on will help to determine two things, quality and file size. Most of the time the higher quality means an increased file size. So keep this in mind as you progress. But for us, we're going to choose Match Source, High Bitrate. Now let's go down to the output name. Click on it and this box should appear. This will allow us to choose what we want to name our file, as well as where we want it to be exported to, onto a specific hard drive or maybe into a particular file folder, wherever is most convenient for you and where you know that you'll be able to find it later. Here we have two boxes, both selected saying Export Video and Export Audio. There may come a time in the future when, for example, you only want to have video and no audio. In the past, I've had clients ask this before, when they want to have a set of visuals to display, but they didn't want the chance of distracting audio to come in and interrupt people's attention. But for most cases, you're going to want to export both audio and video. This is the summary, which tells you all of the information you're currently telling Premiere to export your clip with, and the sequence that it originally came from. Down here are your settings tabs for a variety of different sections. The only one you'll really need to pay attention to when you start out with exporting is the video tab. Here we can see the dimensions of your video that it'll be exported at. Your video's height and width are measured in pixels. Unless you know what you're doing and have a specific plan, you should make sure that your export dimensions match your source dimensions. If you need to change these, unclick the check mark here and then make the changes accordingly. Next is frame rate, which again, unless you have a specific desire and game plan, you should keep to matching with your sequence. The next couple of things will be consistent throughout your exports. Field order should be progressive. Aspect should be in square pixels. TV standard will be based on your location. 
As a general rule of thumb, if you live in North America, you'll go with the NTSC system. And if you live virtually anywhere else, Europe, Asia, most parts of South America, you'll likely use the PAL system. But Premiere Pro should automatically have this assigned based on when you first set up your sequence. Set your profile to high, level to 5.1. Choosing to render at maximum depth may give you a slight boost in quality, but it'll also take longer for your video to actually export. So keep this in mind. Now choose your bitrate settings. VBR should be chosen over CBR. One pass will be exported faster than two pass, but two pass will potentially give you a small boost in quality. You may not notice the difference, but it'll make your export take longer. So again, keep this in mind. Your target and maximum bitrate sliders will have a very specific impact on the quality of your video and its resulting file size, which you can see an estimation of here. This keeps track of all the parameters that you have set and allows Premiere to give its best guess as to the resulting file size. If you're planning to upload your video to the internet, you won't have to worry about setting your bitrate any higher than 20, as compression from websites processing your video will typically nullify anything beyond this point. I would suggest having 20 as the highest you go, and if you really want to keep file size down, you can make changes with these sliders and see the resulting file size estimation to help you make your final decision. Now the final option is to choose whether or not you want to use maximum render quality. You might be able to guess what I'm about to say. It may give you an increase in quality, but it'll also increase the amount of time it takes for your video to export. And with that, you're ready to hit export and watch your video start to be created. Congratulations, you've officially made your own video. As we've gone through this course, keep in mind of the order that we did things in. We started by creating and organizing our project. We got an understanding of our work environment. Then we started to bring clips into our project. We went through them, selecting the best ones, made some basic edits, then some advanced edits. We added titles and graphics, fine-tuned our sound, made our color corrections, and then did a final check and then exported. The reason we chose to learn in this order is because this is arguably the most effective and efficient order in which to create your video. It helps to make sure that the progression is naturally flowing from the most basic things to the more complex things, and from things that you need to start with, followed by elements that can only happen after other things have been completed. This will also help to prevent you from spending a lot of time working on something that you end up throwing away later. If you stuck it out the whole way through, thank you so much, and I hope you feel more confident to work inside of Premiere Pro now. Take what you've learned here as a starting point, and continue to learn and grow. Because you're watching a tutorial on this, it's likely that this is one of the ways that you enjoy learning. If you like, there's a ton of Premiere Pro tutorials available for you to watch either on our YouTube channel here at Motion Array Tutorials, or at MotionArray.com. Thank you so much for joining us on this Premiere Pro Basics course. I really hope that you found it helpful, and I hope to see you in the next video.